Poland Spring. Hello, hello. I think I'm getting the thumbs up that we're going live. <laughs> Hello, Never everybody. quite good sure. Morning. Good morning. Good. Or I just had someone on chat say, uh, I have to ask where Glowforge is located because it is not morning. Oh, uh, hi, where I am. Hi. Yeah, we're in Seattle Incredible. actually. So if you um, are if you're watching this in real time, you're catching us the day after like what our third hundred plus degree weather day in Seattle. We were literally. I am not about built for this. Not built for this <laughs> at all. That is why I moved here. It's to get away from those right? hundred degree days. Yeah, honestly. So we're uh, hydrating. This is uh, uh -huh. hydrating with Glowforge. Sometimes we call it coffee with Glowforge, but <laughs> today we just need to make sure we're staying hydrated because it's hot. Uh -huh. Anybody um, else out there suffering from the heat? Yes. Um, I was talking with Bailey earlier actually about how Glowforge solves problems, uh, and we were talking about printing fans, which so I wish we'd done. So maybe in now. an upcoming stream, I'm sure this won't be the only hot week we have this summer because it's only June. Right. Uh, yeah. But I can't believe it's already the end of June. If if this is your first time tuning in, I'm so glad to see you. But we've been doing these couple times a week for the uh -huh. last six weeks or so. We're going to keep doing them. Uh, so we'd love to hear if you have topic ideas mm -hmm. or if there's like a material you're really excited about or a project that you just don't quite understand how do you accomplish it on the Glowforge. Let us know in the chat or in the comments because we read through all of these mm -hmm. to come up with ideas of how to, of what to do for these. And that's why today we're going to focus on making money with Glowforge because yeah. it's, it's a main thing that y'all are, are on to. You see Glowforge yeah. <laughs> and you see the potential to make so many amazing custom things to make things to like scale a business that you already have or make things more uh, custom for all your clients, mm -hmm. etc. We're really lucky to have Nick here with us today because Nick actually owned a business, not a Glowforge power business. It was before Glowforge existed. But that is true. But yeah. it was my introduction to Glowforge. Yeah, yeah I, right. I was a, a leather worker before I joined Glowforge here and I actually purchased my own Glowforge during the pre-order campaign way back in, I don't even know how long ago that was now. <laughs> What, six uh, years? Six years, Something yeah. like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I was actually, um, what's the word? I totally lost my word. Um, I was paying somebody else to do things for oh, me using oh, a laser, yeah, and I is, realized- What is I, that word? Outsourcing. There we go, there we go. <laughs> it's a business word we should know for this. <laughs> we uh, really this should, generally. It's the heat, I blame the heat, honestly. <laughs> We're um, delirious. But, <laughs> but I realized the potential of having something like this in my own home. So, um, started investigating laser cutters. Um, as just a fortuitous event, a, a family member sold a business, sent me some money out of the blue, which allowed me to buy Glowforge specifically. <laughs> it was a cool sounding job at the time. I flew down to Seattle and I've been here ever since. And that's so six years ago if, now. In an alternate, I just read a, ver a book about the multiverse. I'm sorry. So <laughs> in, an, in an alternate reality though, if you didn't get the job at Glowforge, which <laughs> we would not be here, let me tell you. But yep. <laughs> you could be running a, a yeah. Glowforge powered and I, business. I could show you like yeah. this, this thing here. Mike, can we look just at to give you this an up idea. close? This is a wallet that I've been carrying around for six years or so, and this entire thing was made on the Glowforge. Now, these are panels of leather that have been cut with the laser. All of the stitch holes down the side have been cut with the laser too. And then this design that you see on the back and oh on the gosh. front, that was a hard acrylic stamp that I pressed into the leather to create the design. And it has, if I sort of demo it here, it has this pop-up oh. mechanism on the back. And again, this is all is just slick. like laser made. Slick, slick, slick. Super cool. So anyway, wow. if you want to be just like me. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the stamps are so cool. That's one of my favorites. I, okay. I love it. I really do. Um, let's see. We're getting a bunch of questions already. Daniel Excellent. asked, he says he's getting pulled into a meeting. Will this be recorded to view later? Yes, you Great should question. be able to find all these on our YouTube page or actually on our Facebook page as well. So in the video section. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And On that note, actually, if you have ideas after the fact, please go back to the video, leave an idea, a suggestion, comment in the bottom, in the comment section on YouTube so we can read them later on. Uh, Nancy is asking, can we use cutting boards? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something we'll talk about with them. Um, you know, making a Glowforge powered business. Uh -huh. Yeah, here's one right here. And let me check over on Facebook and see how y'all are doing over here. Here's another one too, just while Bailey's reading those comments. This one here is actually a customer project that was sent in to us by uh, Paradise Custom Design. So if you're out there, uh, welcome to Glowforge. And this is a combination of resin art and a cutting board. So they applied this resin to create the C effect and then used Glowforge to add these uh, seat turtles. I cool. love that. So if you're joining us today because you're thinking about starting up a uh, Glowforge powered business, or maybe you already have a business, but you've realized that you can bring um, some, some of your outsourcing in-house or you can start offering custom goods or whatnot with the Glowforge, uh, we do have a code for you. I created it last night and it's good through, oh gosh, I believe it's good through <laughs> the 9th. Yes, next Friday the 9th. So about a week and a half, a little less than two weeks. 
So that coat is going to be good for $500 off a of Glowforge Pro. That's the model that we're mm -hmm. using here today. We'll talk about the difference for the three. Most business owners do choose the Pro, and it's also good for $250 off the Plus. Mm -hmm. So that's glowforge.com slash summer side hustle. And, uh, nice coat. Yeah. That one's oh, easy to remember. Thank I like you. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so if you're thinking about getting Glowforge soon, in the next two weeks, use that. That's the best price you can find. Um, but with that, um, I thought we could start by just showing, we get the question like, can I start a business with Glowforge? And, and, and before we had, you know, shipped our first batches of Glowforges five years ago, I'm like, yeah, of course, of course you can. That sounds like a lovely dream. Right. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> turns out. Yes, but turns out that thousands of people are actually doing so. I was hoping we could go over to Instagram. Yeah. And I haven't curated this, but um, Mike, can we look at our computer over on Instagram now? Let's take a look. We have uh, Mike and Barry behind the scenes running our cameras and TVs. We have one TV that just won't turn on right now. Yeah, so how many people to live. turn on a TV? <laughs> Turns out We're it's trying. more than four. <laughs> <laughs> So, here we go. so this is just hashtag Glowforge on Instagram that we're looking at here. Um, and we did not curate this, so apologies if there's anything like, I don't know what those uh, custom blood issues are, maybe They're like a awesome. Walking Dead costume them, yeah. or something, but uh, <laughs> I saw those this morning, that's funny. But you can see much of the photography on here is from businesses. You can see folks oh. are, uh -oh. Oh, oh no, we got kick, kicked out from not being logged in. That is so funny. Uh, um, it happens. That's okay. Click on over to the, uh, uh, oh, customer slideshow that I have. This one over here. Uh, oh. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. So this is um, something I just pulled off Instagram earlier that I wanted to show. And this is if you were using Glowforge to make like accessories for your business. Mm -hmm. So you could use Glowforge, of course, to, you know, print onto cutting boards or, um, you know, engrave onto wooden spoons. Hint, hint, that's what we're going to do in just a moment. But <laughs> another way to really elevate your brand and make it really stand out. So imagine that you order something from, um, you know, Liz, Liz, Lizard Lane Design <laughs> on, on Etsy. And then when you receive it, it has this gorgeous custom tag mm -hmm. that just makes it feel like so special. Oh, you're going to think of that in the future. You're going to remember. Yeah. Do you want to share it too? Show these right here. Yeah. So this is a great example uh, where we have, sorry, I keep putting these backwards, which is not helpful to do. <laughs> Uh, we created a, a fake business for a photo shoot. This is called Feathers and Flints. And these are rubber stamps that we created uh, for packaging purposes to demonstrate some of the things that you can do with Glowforge. And these were made on the laser in just a matter of minutes from some laser safe rubber, which is readily available, some scraps of wood. And then these are just pre-bought pillow boxes that we applied the stamp to. But you can see how professional you can make things look, um, how legit, if you want to use that word. But also, <laughs> when we think about um, the value you can add with something like this, you can spin up one oh. of these stamps really quickly. So let's say someone reaches out with a wedding request. You could create something really special and very unique just for them. Oh, it yeah. doesn't cost you very much. It doesn't take very much time. But the recipient of that product feels so special because of the extra effort that you went to. Oh, exactly. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine getting a special like stamp with your wedding date on it? If you had, you know, I was thinking, so I was preparing um, a little teaser. We're going to go into this print in a moment. But I was printing um, a little fake bakery shop um, named Bailey Bakes. I know, very... <laughs> original but I was thinking gosh if I owned like an Etsy store where I sold you know uh, baked goods or a shop maybe where I sold mixes or mm -hmm. whatever if you accompanied your order with a really simple little branded giveaway like this mm -hmm. that's how you get repeat customers and brand loyalty right. and how your brand sticks out and I think that's like how we can all get to the next yeah. level. Like mm -hmm. that's how you stand out. And that's you did it. so much of that <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> with your You're business. threatening spoon wave there. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. For me, I mean, I didn't have access to Goldforge in the very early days. So I was actually using an old cast iron printing press <laughs> to essentially achieve the same thing. But I'm like, picturing you know, like by candlelight in a I, cabin. You know, I, honestly, <laughs> there are pictures of me doing exactly that. Uh, but you know, it worked, but it was so much more effort than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. And with something like this, I could achieve the same thing so much more quickly. Um, and still achieve that same level of personalization and customization. Exactly. It's so cool. It really is. I'm going to check in on chat really quick. Um, Nick, do you have a video on making a leather wallet? Oh, uh, gosh. I, I personally don't. But if you look for somebody called Little King Designs, his name oh, is Ryan. Yes. I believe we have a customer spotlight video on him um, on our YouTube site. Um, but he also has a very active community himself with his own YouTube videos. His content is really great. So I'd look for him. Ryan at Little King Goods. Yes, that's a really awesome one. Uh, can the Glowforge engrave round objects and how deep can it engrave the round objects? Um, yes, Glowforge can accommodate mm -hmm. an object with a curved surface up to about, I think, a half an inch. Mm -hmm. Pretty, it'd stay in focus in a, in a um, satisfactory way. 
I'm not sure how deep. I don't know if you can do like relief 3D engraved sort of uh, engraved on a curved surface. You probably you could. You probably could, yeah. Like if we show you this, for example. Yeah. This this is a very thick piece of wood that is Mike, in all honesty see this quite, again? quite tricky to cut through with Glowforge. It took quite a few passes, mm -hmm. but you can see the level of depth that we can get via engraving. So if you're specifically looking for engraving, you can essentially do multiple passes and eat away that material, just like carving with a chisel, really, to create this kind of 3D relief. Yeah, uh, so does that answer the, the question? If not, maybe pose it in a slightly different way. Let me see if I can uh, give you some more info. Yeah, so this is a, called a 3D engrave. For, we just kind of threw that in there. But <laughs> so, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. so cool. What, this whole thing? <laughs> this, I know. I, I love it. I know. Very casual. Okay, so uh, we thought we'd get started today with a print. I'm going to have Nick show you the Glowforge software, um, which is all based on uh, just the web. So you can use He's using a MacBook today, but we could be doing this from a tablet or even a phone or something mm -hmm. like this. And we're going to be um, doing something that I know a lot of Glowforge owners do, which is print kind of on blanks. So you might buy in bulk on um, eBay mm -hmm. or what have you, like these wooden spoons. I bought a bunch of them, I think on Amazon the other day. And then I um, used some built-in settings. We'll have Nick show you this mm -hmm. to engrave on them. Yeah. And they look fab. They turn out so, great, yeah. Take it away, Nick. If we think about businesses too, just riffing off Bailey's point a yeah. second ago, if you wanted to include one of these for every one of your customers, you could do 90% of the engraving, say the business name and, and, and some icon, and then just add the name later on. So you can pre-prepare a bunch of Maybe this stuff. Maybe we should show so them that. Quick. Put in one with the flower oh, and yeah. then like Wait, add in. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna share my screen now and I'm gonna very briefly, for those of you who aren't familiar with Glowforge, just explain how you create a file that Glowforge can print. Mm -hmm. And this will be a super high level overview, but I think it should help uh, some of you out there. So uh, Mike, over to my screen, please. Perfect, all right, so this is a simple PDF just to explain how Glowforge works. And essentially, Glowforge can do three things, cut, score, and engrave. Cut goes all the way through the material like a pair of scissors, scoring is like drawing with a pen, and engraving is like shading with charcoal and pencils. And we basically use colors to explain to Glowforge which features of our design we want to cut, score, and engrave. And to do that in our software, whatever that is, it might be Google Slides, it might be PowerPoint, it might be Adobe Illustrator, it might be Photoshop, um, you can draw your shapes and color them in with either a stroke like we see here. Oh, I forget this is a PDF, I can't select things. Uh, <laughs> a stroke like we see here or a fill like we see here. And basically when we send this to Glowforge, Glowforge is going to assume that we want to engrave this circle here and it's going to allow us to choose either cut and score for these two engravings here. And the reason I've got four is, is key actually. Now everything that's the same color will be treated the same. So these two blue circles, when they appear in Glowforge, will be engraved with the same settings. But these two circles, because they're two different colors, could be cuts or scores and can be treated independently. And if you apply all of this to this very simple coaster design here on the right-hand side, we can set this black outline on the outside to a cut. We could set these pink lines to a score. We could set these green lines to a score. And we can set these blue uh, circles to an engrave. Mm -hmm. And what that looks like is this. Now I'm gonna head over to the software you can see I've got my design in here. To get that in there, I just saved it as a PDF, create, and then upload. And if I open that up, I'm hoping it's still in here. And I, oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> you can see how we have four different print steps on the left-hand side here, which relates to the four different colors that we set up with our software. And you can see here, Glowforge has assumed that this is gonna be an engrave. You can see how those circles light up as we hover over it. The outside is a cut. Now it's thought that these circles want to be a cut too, but I'm going to change those to a score. We just head across there, change score. And likewise for these ones here, it's assumed we want to engrave those, but if I want to set those to say a cut, I can do that too. And that in a nutshell is how you set up your file for printing with Codewatch. Absolutely, and so. you could have made that file on a myriad of programs. Yeah. Like Nick, just I think you literally made that one in like Google Slides or something. I did, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was kind of pushing the boundaries. If you like. Yeah. <laughs> what can we do? So it's really about um, identifying those different elements in the design: which ones you want to cut, which ones you score, and mm -hmm. which to engrave, and then bringing it all together. And you could bring in those elements from different programs too. If you had art from that's very true. Uh, the yeah. noun project, and you had text from you know a text that you downloaded from Google Text mm -hmm. or what whatnot, yeah. um, and yeah. then bring them together. Bring them together, arrange them in the size, uh, copy paste resize we'll show you all that but in lots second. of folks like to use you know illustrator inkscape um, all those you know popular design programs that mm -hmm. will work with glowforge the main thing is getting a uh, a design that will export into a pdf that's yes a, yeah if there's anybody out there who's a bit more technical svgs work too sure dxf if you're used to autocad that kind of thing but pdfs are a great safe bet <laughs> yeah, they like work really well uh, alphabet soup yeah. I, <laughs> like, I can't remember <laughs> these, <laughs> these letters 
Uh, should we get started? Absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, should I put these in? Uh, yeah, actually, before you do that, let mm. me open this design so we can show people live preview. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. This, for those of you who've joined us before, I'm sorry, <laughs> you've heard me say this He's before. pumped about this. Oh, live preview, honestly, was a game changer for me. I love this feature. Now, what you can see right now on the screen, for a second there, sorry, Mike. <laughs> Mike's juggling everything at once, uh, <laughs> is the Glowforge print app. And mm -hmm. you can see my design here in the middle and basically a black square on the outside. Now, what we're looking at is a photograph of what's inside the Glowforge. Now, if we open that lid and then Bailey throws a couple of these spoons in there for us. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, normal to stand behind your Glowforge <laughs> when you print, right? Yeah, it doesn't look awkward at all. No. <laughs> I'm just going to do that flower one just to throw you off. Yeah, I don't know. No, you're going to have to design well, around it, Nick. Let me, let me show you how that looks, <laughs> what that looks like. And we close the lid. And if we jump back over to the software, Mike, we'll see it's saying scanning in the top right-hand corner. And we're going to see this image is going to update. And we'll see those four spoons reflected in the software itself. And what that allows me to do is take my design and literally work on the thing that we're printing. Move it around, copy, paste, et cetera, et cetera. So let's start at the top. First things first, these are wooden spoons. They're an uneven shape, and so we have a tool to help you position your design more accurately, and that's called set focus. So we're gonna go to these three dots, to set focus, and I'm gonna click on a spoon. And what's gonna happen is the head of the laser, if you can switch over to this one, Mike, just real quick. Let's see if it comes up in time. <laughs> uh, okay, this piece right here, you'll see this black box, it's gonna move in a second. That's where the laser comes out, but it's also where we can use the cameras in the head to take a height reading with that spoon and focus everything and get it all set up really accurately. Mm -hmm. And typically with a laser, if anyone out there has used something else, um, you have to do all this by hand. It's right. prone to human error. I've definitely made a fair yes. share of my mistakes in, in my time. Sometimes you can use like there. a nef nifty little like plastic tool. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yes. absolutely, definitely absolutely. Definitely a lot more human error though. Um, but we uh, basically solved that with software. Mm -hmm. um, we have robots doing that for us uh, so you don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Now, I accidentally canceled that operation. My apologies. <laughs> uh, obviously got too carried away there for a second. So and I'm you're sure showing take that height reading again. The set focus, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. That's a kind of like a hidden a hidden feature. I feel not everyone knows about it. Yeah. But it's the best way to it's the, the way to get the best print on something that's, you know, an unusual height. Yes. Yes. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, or a uh, maybe a found object, something like a cutting board as somebody mentioned, mm -hmm. um, a leather purse, something like that. I mean, to give you an example of another one here. This one right there. Yeah, leather purse, metal flask, all sorts of things that you can sort of, you know, buy in bulk and then customize. And really clever folks will pre-print, you know, all of the design except for the part that needs to be customized for the client. Yep. And then as Nick will show in the software, you're able to print just exactly on the part of the object that you want. So now that that's done, let's head across to the software and you can watch me just resize this design and move it into position. This is literally yeah. just, just drag and drop. Drying it's and very dropping. easy. It's, it's the software program you've used. <laughs> <laughs> now, do we want to spin these baby like that? That could look nice, couldn't yeah. it? Yeah. And maybe we resize this house to make it just slightly bigger. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah, and this. they're separate elements. So I just brought those in from an outside program. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you can see just literally dragging and dropping, position knows where we want them to go. Now, one nice thing about live preview, as Bailey mentioned, trying to throw us off, if we have something with a design already, like this flower, <laughs> I can take just one part of this design, Command or Control C and V to copy and paste, take a new one across, and stick that where we might want it. Now, this one doesn't fit super well, so maybe I'm gonna make that just a little bit smaller like this, and pop it underneath, something like that. I'm gonna zoom out again, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna grab this one, copy and paste, it's cool you how you can how grab the two elements as one to copy and paste, yeah. and it keeps them exactly the same size and same position, so the top two spoons and the bottom spoon will be identical. Absolutely. And you can see how this spoon's angled slightly, so I can grab this tool here and just rotate it until visually I feel happy about that. And we basically just repeat that process until everything is in the right spot. Yeah, and in so terms of engraving one. on a round object, I think it, these are kind of like rounded um, spoon handles, and it could certainly handle something like this, like if we wanted to do a designer text down the handle. That's right. And so here I'm uh, going to choose the uh, thick basewood plywood setting. Um, Bailey did a little test last night and found this worked quite well. Yeah. And I'm seeing here in the software, and I'm not entirely sure why this is. Maybe we found a bug together. <laughs> um, oh, gosh. But it is. Uh, set the power level here to 1. Um, so I'm actually just going to go in here, choose a different material and see if it happens the same way. It looks like it does. Okay. So 
here's a fly by the seat of your pants uh, oh, introduction goodness. to manual settings. Proof grade is a material that we make ourselves to make this process right. easier. And we'll go into it in a little bit more detail. But essentially, if you use proof grade, all of these settings have been uh, configured and tested and are guaranteed to work and they're pre-saved in the software. Right. But if you're using something like the wooden spoon, uh, where it is maybe a dissimilar material to proof grade, um, the software itself won't know what we're printing on and how to print on it. So I'm just going to jump into here. And I can see uh, 1,001 is going to be our power. And I'm going to take a guess and say 1,000 at 70, just based on my experience. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do Normally, this. if you weren't Nick and didn't have a brain full of Glowforge <laughs> settings, uh, if you were looking to print on wooden spoons and you knew that these were, for example, bamboo, I'm not sure what they are, I don't recall, but I, could, I would recommend that you go on the Glowforge community forum, which is community.glowforge.com, type in wooden spoons, and see what others have done. The community forum is basically a online club for folks who own Glowforges, mm -hmm. and they have shared tons of results of what they've tried. Everything from like, you know, um, you know, different sorts of acrylics, like glitter acrylics or camo acrylics or whatever, mm -hmm. to food, to you know, river rocks. Exactly, uh, just yeah. everything. And Literally so, if you anything. start with their settings, and then see maybe oh you want the engrave a little darker or lighter or it didn't cut quite all the way through so you'll uh, turn, turn down the speed a little bit you'll learn to manipulate it so that it works for your exact material and it's it, it's really quite easy yeah. with that resource it um, looks way more complicated than sure. it actually is yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway I hit print the Glowful just processed the design it sent it to the laser we have one button on the machine right here, which is glowing. I think you can just about see it. <laughs> so actually, baby, these are your spoons. Do you want to do the honors? Oh, yes. I feel rude taking that away yes. from you. Yes, my, my inaugural spoon. <laughs> people my will, people will fight over these, yeah. <laughs> um, I love it, it's great. So I thought we'd talk about proof grade for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, we'll definitely show you this print as it, as it progresses, but we'll wait till we get down to the bottom spoon, maybe. Yeah. So as we were mentioning before, we make a line of materials for your Glowforge called proof grade. So what they are is they've been specifically chosen to work perfectly every time. So you don't have to do any of that futzing or research on the community forum or contacting a material manufacturer um, like you might if you wanted to just grab any old material. Yeah. So these are, as you can see, they look white because of they've got this masking on them. It's kind of like just a simple peel off paper that keeps the material protected during your print. So that when you're finished, you peel it off. We can probably yeah, I can show you on this that. one oh, here yeah. if you like. Yep. yep. And you can see this is like a, a gorgeous walnut underneath. And these are actually already sanded and pre-finished, so you don't have to do any finishing steps, which for businesses mm -hmm. is key. I know when I've talked to business owners, they talk about optimizing for prints that are fast or prints that don't require a lot of finishing. Mm -hmm. If that's the direction of your business, I've also talked to business owners that do, you know, multi hundred dollar custom items right. and they just do one or two. Pre finishing a week sort of thing. is a is a big mm -hmm. is a big it's, part of the that. Point. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, so absolutely. but there's a whole range of proof grade materials too. Um, the big sheet here you see is a piece of plywood. Mm -hmm. This is hardwood, so this is solid wood all the way through. Uh, we have leathers, we have vibrant acrylics. Here's a leather. Uh, there's a leather one. This is kind of cool. This one doesn't have uh, any of the protective coating on, but this is another solid piece of walnut, but it's mm -hmm. paper thin. This is called veneer. So it's really flexible and it has a self-adhesive backing so you can create uh, stickers and yeah, things like that is, with this, this which is, is super cool. An unsung hero of the Glowforge I world. I feel I like agree. it's going to have a moment and all of a sudden everyone's going to be like, wait a minute, veneer. we can make wooden <laughs> stickers because they're so cool. Yeah. Uh, Paula is asking, is Corel Draw compatible with the Glowforge software? Mm -hmm. software? Yep, yep, so long as you can export as an SVG or a PDF, you're absolutely fine. I'm sure Corel can do that. Uh, I'm truly excited. I'm just I'm thinking about getting the machine. I just want to learn more about it first. Perfect. Should I remove the tray to engrave on wooden hangers? Asked Tyler mm. B. Removing the tray is a great question. Um, if you have an item that's more than about two inches tall, you're going to want to remove the crumb tray, which is this black tray that sits in the bottom of your Glowforge. When we're not printing, maybe we'll pop it open and show you. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you might need to, Tyler. It depends on, on. Have you done hangers, wooden hangers like that? If it's the ones I'm thinking about, Tyler, where they have the sort of uh, slight V shape yeah. to them, you probably will need to take that uh, yeah. crumb tray out. But then, it really depends on the hanger. And then you'll want to use that same technique of the uh, set focus mm -hmm. in order to uh, make sure you're yeah. in focus there. Could always print your own hangers, too. <laughs> no kidding. Just, just throwing yeah. it out there, you know, <laughs> if you wanted to. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. Engraving leather. Do you have to use vegetable tan leather or can we use other raw leathers? I know that we did a lot of research before we, cho we, cho we, choose we chose the <laughs> veg <Right>. tan. Oh. <laughs> um, we found that it looked the had the most beautiful results, cut the most smoothly, produced the least um, like smoke and part uh, particulates mm -hmm. in the yep. air when, when we print. So you certainly can experiment with other leathers, but we have put a lot of thought. I mean, you, you're the leather expert, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Bailey hit it on the head, really. Um, we experimented for a long time to find what works best with the resources we had. Mm -hmm. Every tannery is different. Every leather is different. Sure. Check out the community forum, see what people are doing. But vegetable tan is going to be your best bet. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I don't know how long the TV, TV's been on, but our oh. TV that was <laughs> off is on. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, why don't we show them the print now oh, that yeah, it's yeah. a little bit further Let's down. Do you want to go around the front again? Yeah. So for those of you who are just joining us, Nick and I are kind of giving you some tips and tricks about making money with Glowforge. And one great way to make money is by printing on, uh, you know, kind of blanks. These are uh, spoon blanks. So um, I, you can see I printed a uh, sunflower on that this morning, just doing some testing. And Nick um, is now printing Bailey Bakes right underneath. That's it. I'm sorry I can't zoom in. I'm trying to avoid the reflection of this light, but you can see Bailey's name kind of appearing. And if I go to the side, maybe you can see that spoon behind it there, <laughs> uh, which already has Bailey's name. But it's basically working line by line, vertically up the design, kind of like an old dark matrix printer, and creating a permanent mark on the surface of that spoon. Uh, now, that's not going to wash off, so perfectly dishwasher safe, which is pretty neat. Um, and what else was I going to say? Uh, food safe, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you give that a quick clean and then oil it, you could use that for, for food, too. If you're printing directly on food, we do recommend that you have a Glowforge that you use specifically for, for food. So if you're going to be the laser engraved chocolate chip cookie company, like mm -hmm. super cool yep. idea, but you should just use chocolate chip cookies in your Glowforge in order to be safe. Yes. Um, Great tip. I mean, I haven't eaten any laser cookies. I usually just I usually just laser them and then yeah. keep them for months. <laughs> They're just gorgeous. But you know, I, I, I know people are eating them out there. That's so. true. Yeah, I'm sure they're delicious. Oh my goodness, the chat is just going crazy. Okay, Robin is asking, what's the biggest advantage owning the Plus over the Pro? Let's go mm -hmm. into that. So, Great question. So we have three different models of the Glowforge. We have the Glowforge Basic, the Plus, and the Pro. So today we're using the Pro. Um, it's our most popular by far, and it is what most folks who own a business or, or rely on their Glowforge to help produce products for a business tend to go for. And that, that's because it's a little bit more powerful. It goes faster, it can cool at a, higher rate <laughs> so you can keep it running all day um, with the plus or the basic models depending on the ambient temperature in the room that you're in sometimes you might have to pause and let the cool print cool um, and so if if time is of the essence and you're like needing a little factory in your uh, home that's gonna be really important to you and you're gonna yes. wish you had that speed and that um, continuous printing time with the pro but the biggest thing with the Pro is going to be the pass-through slot. No pun intended. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so here's an example. Very business relevant again. Oh, yes. This is an A-frame sign that we created as part of that Feathers and Flint brand uh, for our photo shoot one time. This is just one half of it, but this entire thing was created on this Glowforge Pro. It's a piece of medium maple plywood, so it's very strong. We have a little cutout here, which is a bit hard to see on the camera, but <laughs> it's kind of the shadow reflection of the of the feather. And then the legs are cut yep. on it, of course. Uh -huh. And we applied some paint just to add some color. Uh, the letters here are thick black acrylic, and they're stuck on there. And if I grab this one, um, here we go, look. You can see the uh, sort of level of depth that we can achieve there, which is pretty cool. Uh, purple parts are just plywood with a bit of paint uh, so attached. But you know, look at that. You'll notice that this is like much larger than the Glowforge. And so how that was accomplished was like we said, using the pass-through slot. So at the front, you can see the little yellow sticker down in the front and kind of that line. Um, there is a slot in the Glowforge that a large piece of material can pass through the entire Glowforge. Then there's one in the back and print in sections. So um, do we have the, what else do we have around? Do we have the giraffe around? We've I don't got think the, we have the giraffe. We have that big home sweet home sign. Um, oh, that's a shame. We'll have to show the draft yeah, another nice. time. Yes. <laughs> but essentially, like Bailey said, you design your file uh, at full size, and then when you load it into Glowforge, you enable the pass-through feature, and it prints as much as it can in one go, mm -hmm. asks you to move the material, the cameras figure out where it left off, and it right. prints the next bit, and you just do that again and again until the print's finished. Right, exactly. So, mm -hmm. so if you're wanting to print really large things, art installations, long signs, mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, for uh, event planners or, yep. uh, at weddings, you know, those big, gorgeous font signs of like the couple's last name or yep. whatever, and it's Beautiful. 10 feet long. 
Um, so that might be a good option for you. The, the biggest differences between the, the pro and then going uh, down to a plus or a basic <laughs> are gonna be the speed and the continuous uh, cooling and then that pass-through slot. So the, the plus has some of those upgrades. It's faster than the basic. I think it cools a bit more than the basic, um, but it doesn't have the pass-through and then the basic is gonna be the, the slowest of the three. Mm -hmm. That being said, um, the basic is an incredible machine, especially for the price. You can you can make virtually like everything we've showed except for that sign. Um, <laughs> and if you got really clever, I'm sure you can figure out how to make large items with yep. the basic. So you just really need to think about um, you know what you need for your your business case or your hobby case or what mm -hmm. it is. And I, I think you're going to be happy with whatever Glowforge that you mm -hmm. choose. I, I rarely hear people with um, big giant regrets. <laughs> I yeah, totally agree. So. Um, Look at that. Let, me, let me grab this uh, thing here so people can see once again what's happening with these Tyler, screens. yes, proof grade does come large enough for pass through. I, I know this year with um, you know supply and wood shortages mm -hmm. worldwide, um, it might be challenging to to get pass through wood, but we do and we intend to have that in the future, and it's gorgeous. It's just like the ones we were showing, like a four foot piece of like yeah, walnut or mm -hmm. whatever. It's yeah, awesome. It's super cool. But you know, if you wanted to, you could go to your local lumber store, ask them to cut it into twenty inch uh, width. So long as it's no thicker than a quarter inch, you'll be able to pass that through your Glowforge as well. You know, one thing I forgot to mention and I wanted to hit on was the option to purchase the designs that you sell. Uh -huh. So a lot of folks see Glowforge and they think like, I'm awesome at running a business. I know how to build a brand. I have ideas for products to sell. I have, you know, I, I want to do it, but I'm not a designer. And so I eh, guess this isn't for me. Right. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. Like I feel that because I'm, I'm not a designer and that would have stopped me in my tracks. But I want to remind you that in addition to like free design resources on the community forum and using easy, super easy programs like PowerPoint or Canva or what have you to design, you also have the option to purchase designs on Etsy. Like if you Google, right, if you go on Etsy right now and, and look for like Glowforge design files, you'll see there's thousands of so them many. there. Mm -hmm. And yep. then customizable and folks have tested, you know, what sells in different markets mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff. So check that out um, if that's something you think you might be interested in. A lot of folks didn't, don't realize that and yeah. it really opens a lot of doors. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, Glowforge itself has its own catalog as well. It's an ever expanding repository of designs. Sure. It's quite small right now, but we're getting submissions all the time and it is growing exponentially. So it won't be long before you'll be able to go there for all your design needs. And do you want to show off that design, Bailey? The design of the month? Oh, yeah. This Why is, don't this we? This is pretty neat. I, I really like this. Um, I think this might be a sneak peek that we haven't emailed out yet. So oh, really? Oh. It's okay. It's okay. okay. They, won't, they won't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you won't tell. Please, please don't tell. <laughs> so this is our design of the month. We'll give you just a little peek. This will be available soon in the Glowforge catalog, but it is a birdhouse. Yeah. Let's do a little, just a little close up here. This is like a retro diner birdhouse made of acrylic. It is beautiful. It's made by one of our customers, Chelsea, who right now is actually starring on Making It, that NBC right? show. Oh yeah. my gosh, with Nick Offerman uh -huh. and Amy Poehler. She's on it. So um, cool. check her out. She's at Chelsea Makes. And um, we'll be doing, um, I'm going to do a Q&A with her soon. We're going to be sharing some more of her work. So stay tuned for that. But this is super cool. So if you um, if you have a Glowforge, and you'll have access to the Glowforge catalog. So you could print one of these at home. Mm -hmm. And you could customize it um, You know, with your own. This is Birdie's Diner, which is funny because it's for birds. Yep. But you could <laughs> <laughs> use your own name or little details about yeah, your home or whatever. Too, it's, oh, exactly. Materials, yeah. so I'm cute. very distracted because I've not seen it in real life it's yet. It's kind of like, uh, it looks like an in and out or something. It's, it's great. Like, it's I, I love it. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, way too okay. cute. Oh, um, too this much fun. is me up at least two people have said that they have gotten their glowforge delivered during this live stream what <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> well congratulations i i guess we know what you're doing this afternoon that Hopefully is so funny yeah work. craftable <laughs> things said just delivered uh mine five minutes ago and so earlier i saw so someone say the fun. same thing that is so funny uh janelle's asking what type of glue would you use to attach those acrylic words to wood oh um, it's entirely up to you. Depending on the application, you could use anything from an epoxy-based glue to uh, a super glue or a crazy glue, I think it's called in this country. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I'm not really you sure of the, the terminology. The crazy glue. <laughs> <laughs> Epoxy's gonna be the strongest, a little messy to work with. Uh, super glue works really well. Um, and I, I just saw a question about ventilation, so we mm. should get to that. Uh, so every time you're printing with your glow forge, you want to make sure that you have a way to vent it outside. So for most folks, that just means a window. Mm -hmm. Your glow forge comes with everything you need to do that. This is just your like basic dryer hose, like just like it comes with your dryer. It's like a six inch port right here. Attach it to the back of your glow forge, mm -hmm. throw the other side out the window or 
Um, mine literally like runs through the screen and that seems to be just fine yeah, for me in my office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if you don't have a, a window or a door uh, exterior that you can use, you can also get our air filter. So here's one of them right here. Uh, you can see it's like about the size of a office trash bin or what have you. Uh -huh. Just this little guy. It's cute. It's, <laughs> it's cute. like a little pet. I don't know. It's kind of anthropomorphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. like a Wally um, character yeah. kind of thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> like Wally, exactly. <laughs> So this will allow you to pr print your Glowforge in any room of the house, even if you're in like, you know, a basement apartment or what have you. Um, and yeah, really Simple. easy to yeah. use. Attach yeah. the house to the top, re one dial in the front. Reuse, or not reusable, um, you'll have to replace replaceable cartridges mm -hmm. and that will depend on the material that you're using, how soon you'll go through cartridges. Like okay. I know some woods uh, use the cartridges more than like acrylics or what have you. Right. So, and there's tons of folks that have um, experience using them again on the forum. That's it. That's what we use in the office too. Oh yeah, <laughs> quite a few of them around here. Well, these finished up. <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. Cute. Look at those. Let's grab that. I'm having so much fun practicing these prints at home. I usually practice what we're gonna do sometimes the day before the stream, and now I'm just like, oh, well, everyone's getting custom stuff for Christmas. So fun. Okay, where's the little phone? Oh, the little there phone is, is here. So here's these guys. Uh-huh. And this is a good example, actually, of, uh, of these settings, where if I take a look at, let's mm -hmm. take a look at this one here, for example. Um, the uh, Bailey Baker, the text here, I guess that setting, if you remember, implied 70 uh, power. Um, the sunflower is much deeper on the top here. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to create the same effect with Bailey, I could just increase the power a little bit and get that same effect. Otherwise, you can use it really nicely to control the color you get from those two. Yeah. So, yeah again, super nice, permanent mark, doesn't damage the spoon very saleable product. I love it. Can Glowforge cut holes in a wooden tube without damaging the material on the opposite wall of the tube? Wow. In a, in a wooden a tube? Wooden, I think so. Um, so I'm picturing a wooden tube. So your tube, Jeff, would have to be like less than two inches tall and then mm -hmm. it would lay in the bed of the Glowforge and then you could cut a hole right in the top of it. I don't think it would go through the tube if it's a hollow tube. But Yeah, it wouldn't come out the other side. No. Uh, you'll probably get some, some sort of smoke and schmutz on the inside mm -hmm. of the tube as the laser passes through, um, but not entirely sure. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> um, is adhesive applied? Is the... It is, is it I think we have a specific Sorry. question. Sorry, goodness. I think they're asking about the masking their own materials. So oh, yes, mm -hmm. if you um, if you choose your own materials, like you've got this wood that you get at your local hardware store that you just love to print on, mm -hmm. and you figure out the settings, like by all means you can do that, and you can mask them yourself. I like to use something just like painter's tape. Yeah, um, that and works really yeah, nicely. So you can just kind of like lay it on the material, and then just on the side that you're printing through. I'm trying to look for an example here. Here we go. Look. So that masking just just to show you if I can, oops. Um, this medallion here still has the masking on. You can see how it kind of has a brown sort yeah. of tinge to it. Um, now the masking essentially absorbs, not absorbs, it, <laughs> that brownish tinge, that smoke goes on the masking instead of the wood. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. basically once you peel it away, what's left underneath is a very pristine surface. And this is not the best example, sorry. I just, Obviously, flowering there a little bit. But, a dark, uh, a dark wood is more obvious, but you can kind of see the difference between like the smoke uh -huh. right there and then the crisp like maple or what whatever uh, this is underneath. And the other cool thing about masking, um, especially for a design like that, that folks do is they'll they'll remove just some of the masking and use it as a t as a way to paint or finish yeah, mm -hmm. in different ways, Absolutely. which is really like really cool. Almost, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Which is actually what we do with that sign. And then I wanted to make sure that we showed off some of the stuff that we have back here. Oh yeah. Great example. Now, a lot of this is actually made by customers, people like you out there. So we've been um, having a lot of fun lately. We've been going on Etsy and like buying customer stuff to show it off yep. to you all. So here are a few that have come in recently. Um, so this, okay, this purse is incredible. Um, so this is dyed leather with just a gorgeous geometric design. And then this bag is actually wood. So this is a technique called the living hinge. And so this was, this is a solid piece of mm, plywood probably. Mm -hmm. And then they've cut this specific pattern, and there's a couple different patterns, ways to do this, so that the wood becomes completely flexible. And they've done that on the side too to create yeah. the sides of the, the handbag. That's just amazing. If you want to blow someone's mind, show them living hinges. Um, Look at this. Um, this oh. one is like a puzzle box. Uh -huh. You can see how the sides turn, there's little symbols in there. We haven't yet we don't taken know. the time to figure out how to I'm not solve really it. a puzzle person, I <laughs> must admit. I'm like, that's beautiful. I would just set that somewhere and just be right. like, I wonder if there's like something in it. I, 
It kind of sounds, sounds like, like it. it. Maybe there's layers. We we should probably solve that one. Uh, well, <laughs> um, here's some really cool blocks that folks have done. Um, this is a photo. This isn't from someone's business, but just to show you, this is if you were to engrave a photo onto wood, um, you can get some gorgeous definition. And so I saw someone asking in chat uh, about how to edit a photo, um, and we do have photo engrave settings in the app ready for you to use. Here's that cutting board that we mentioned. This is a little... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you grabbed this one. I, I like this one a lot. A little guy that we made. We made this in a live stream last week, so if you're on our Facebook or YouTube, you can scroll back and, and find this, but what this is is um, a... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so it's a, a cross-stitch blank. So I've already cross-stitched him, but if imagine that he isn't cross-stitched and he just has the holes in him and you could sell this in a store it even has the like little little um hole so that you could put it on a rack so imagine mm -hmm. this was at like a booth and you had like a whole zoo of little cross stitch blank animals right. that you could sell um would be a really fun like summer activity for kids and again packaging and products all made on the exactly Forge. yeah this is cardboard and we printed that on the glowforge and then he just pops in and out of here oh my gosh darling yeah. Here's um, you know, an engrave on a leather purse like we talked about. This is a gorgeous engrave on a silicone uh, Apple watch band. Look at the detail in that. I mean. It's really incredible. And you can see someone's doing, you know, some great branding of their own here. Mm -hmm. I, I would recommend doing some Glowforge made branding, but you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I understand. So people, that shop is probably so busy. They it, don't they're have time. probably so busy. Exactly. <laughs> Here's this um, Bilbo bag and st stamp uh, we made in a stream recently. It's got some... Um, uh, red ink on it mm -hmm. but this is again that laser safe rubber that we showed mm -hmm. we got some glass over there too oh. uh, I know a lot of people ask about glass uh, if you're in the hot sauce business or caramel or something like that Yum. you can buy these bottles and stick them in the glow force they look me great. hungry for lunch now <laughs> yeah so this is just every time we've just got more and more back here we try and refresh it um, I mean, if, if anybody out there is a Glowforge owner and wants to send us something to have on this table, Ooh. Um, please, please do. We'll, we'll happily show pay you for it. Just sleigh. let us know. Yeah, bring, bring it in and we can show it off to, uh, to, I to love everybody it. else. I haven't said this for a while. Uh, so if you've tuned in since I mentioned, there is a discount. If you're thinking about getting a Glowforge for this summer, um, use the code glowforge.com slash summer side hustle. Mm -hmm. And that'll get you $500 off a of Glowforge Pro, $250 off a plus. And that code will last till midnight next Friday, the 9th. <laughs> Chaz Excellent. says, I am so a puzzle person. Chaz, we need to get you in here to work on this box. Yeah. Maybe you can give me some tips. Great I'm not idea. really sure what to do with it, but it's really beautiful. Uh, Fleming Sign says, I own a distillery also, and I'm looking at my oh. high-end spirit having leather labels done in-house. Okay, yes. Like, that's what we're talking about, people. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I, I have a story. I'll keep it really short. I have a friend who <laughs> was obsessed with Jack Daniels, and he actually went to the distillery and bought an entire barrel. Um, wow. Apparently one of the only wow. people to do this. Yeah, it was like a 30th <laughs> birthday present himself. Whoa. Anyway, when they did that, they actually put everything into bottles and put those bottles into like cases of 12. But uh -huh. every bottle had a little hang tag around the neck with his name on it. So bougie. Yeah, it was, it was oh incredible. So perfect idea. Yeah, I love can, that. And it's those details that you can, you can mm -hmm. charge so much more, which yeah. I mean, that, that margin is what we're all looking for with the business, right? Yeah. And the thing is, folks want and expect custom goods these days like I just got married two years ago and we actually did a stream all about weddings which if, again if you scroll back you can see that and uh, there, there's no generic wedding decor I need it anymore these days your it's cups true. have your names on them your napkins have your names on them your signs are custom like and why not we can make everything Absolutely. so it's so yeah. cool and that's a silly idea I don't know if you saw this before but the veneer this self-adhesive material oh again, perfect for bottles oh my gosh so nice what's the thickest material being printed on can be mm -hmm. so like we mentioned before, you can fit about two inches if you remove the crumb tray. So something like maybe a uh, like champagne a, flute, yeah, but not a wine jar, glass. Kind of yeah, spice mm -hmm. jar, cutting board, laptops, those will all fit in the Glowforge. But you can cut, and so you can engrave on those up to about two inches. Cutting through, you need to stick to about a quarter inch. If you want to get ambitious, you can try uh, cutting twice and getting through a little deeper. I've seen mm -hmm. folks do that, but in general, stick to about a quarter inch yeah. for cutting through. Really depends on the material. Uh, let's see. I have a puzzle file you can make for a cryptic, Chaz says. I mean, oh, cool. Nice. Puzzles, pu we could do a whole stream on puzzles, mm -hmm. to be honest. And gaming stuff. Oh, There's, yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, we even have like a backgammon game here that somebody has made, which is a travel folding one. I think that showed up on the camera okay. Um, and this is a combination of plywood and then the inside pieces are actually veneer, that same flexible material we talked about. 
so fantastic man it's so fun having all of y'all all of you here um i have i've only read aloud like a fraction of the, the chat <laughs> questions today another Ooh. puzzle this is a little maze that we made a long time ago again all gold forge may just from some scraps of material these are pretty fun promotional things or just absolutely fun games. I just like the idea of making things that are custom. Like imagine if you commissioned a board game for, you know, a friend's birthday who loves board games, mm -hmm. but then it was like about his life. Yep. Like, oh, I saw this super funny one that someone made that was a game of operation and, but it was making fun of their husband because he's like a hypochondriac. And so it was Amazing. like, it was like, Jared, Jared <laughs> stubbed his toe and it would be, and she custom it. made it like hilarious. That's so I good. love so it. Good. Folks are so, so creative and making money with Glowforge. I, I know a question that we get a lot is how long does it take to pay off your Glowforge? Mm -hmm. Can your Glowforge pay for itself? And y'all are trying to, you know, figure out your your budgets. How many how many do I need to sell per week and all that? Great great idea. Like I encourage you to whip up a little business plan. Yep. But of course, it's really going to vary on uh, on your individual business. I have heard folks say from about three to six months if they're able to focus on it full time. Mm -hmm. But a lot of folks spend you know a couple years doing it part time. What did you do, Nick? What did I do? Mm -hmm. With your uh, business, were you part-time and then you went full-time with it? With my leather business? Mm -hmm. uh, I was full-time with the leather business, nice. but to be honest, as soon as I bought the Glowforge, I moved over here to the company, and that business, unfortunately, sort of fell by the wayside. Yeah. I yeah, put all my time and energy into here, which is nice. I feel like I'm lucky enabling us. people out there. <laughs> Absolutely. We're know? very lucky, yeah, but yeah. Nick would have a pretty sweet leather company <laughs> these days. Uh, well, you know, maybe I'll take a sabbatical <laughs> and kick that off again or something like that. Well, uh, I think it's about time for us to go, but thanks so much for joining us today. Um, like I said, I did not get to nearly any of your questions. There were so many, but that is so <laughs> exciting. So I hope you all will join us back here. We should be popping up um, at least once a week, maybe mm -hmm. sometimes a few times a week for the for the course of the summer. So yeah. we'll see you here. Leave comments and let us know um, what Ideas, you want to see. Kind of thing. If you're uh -huh. on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe so that uh, when I schedule upcoming streams, you'll be able to see when those are and you'll get a little bit of heads up and that way maybe you can you can make it. And yeah. this will be available later or if you, um, you know, just got the email and it's 2 p.m., today it's in the future <laughs> uh you can watch back you can share this with friends um and it'll be available we're just so glad to have you all here with us this has been such a blast Sufus. <laughs> <laughs> this has been so fun thank you everybody <laughs> i appreciate right. it what a, a way one. to end right <laughs>